Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have one of my best friends, Matt Howard. Matt, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Jason. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, I'm super excited to have you on the show because um, you know do, normally Learn with Jason is a show about code, um, and you are not a coder. Um, so today we're actually going to talk about something totally off the wall. So if uh, if you don't mind, do you want to just give a little bit of a background on, you know, who you are and what your expertise is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I started off as just a lowly artist trying to figure out how to make themselves uh, money in this world <laughs> and uh, um, eventually stumbled on a graphic design, which turned into a career in retail design. So like applying branding to spaces to get people to mostly just to buy things mm -hmm. um over time uh that evolved into an expertise in like um really helping people just enjoy their time um, and experience with a brand in a space or even like themselves too not just yeah. like a connection to you know a big brother situation and, situation, and so but and you've yeah. worked on some really, really interesting projects. So uh, if, if you don't mind, like maybe a couple highlights from your, your portfolio, like what you did and, and, and kind of what the experience was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I spent uh, quite a few number of years working at Nike and still do now as a like our client of mine. And uh, some of the projects we got to work on there uh, were like taking over their flagship stores, uh, creating just over the top. Uh, experiences there, like how to, how to like make a shoe, um, just exude the brand and like create like an emotional connection to, to something as simple as that. Right. So we would blow out a whole space with uh, just spend a lot of money, a lot of energy, a lot of time, uh, developing a, a, this, a story, uh, just to give this a tangible experience. Um, so you'd be looking at things if it's, if we're talking about like, uh, selling a waterproof or like a, a shoe meant for, um, for running outdoors. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, there's innovations around, um, for reflectivity, water repellents, um, and speed that they'd want to convey. And so you can, you can create little concepts around each of those things and develop them into a physical material palette to exude that like, okay, reflectivity, let's put 3M vinyl everywhere. <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> rain let's like start playing sound like let's start getting gobos throwing lights um and like patterns onto space and like really create like an immersive space that um like you know that exudes that so it was it's super fun uh in, in that industry I love, it. I love it yeah it's uh it's a lot of fun and like I, I also feel like something that's really interesting about the the space that you're in is like like, I feel like, you know, I started this stream off on the wrong foot because I was like, oh, this isn't a this isn't a code stream. You're not a coder. But but that's that feels very dismissive of of just like how interesting this space is and, and how much overlap there actually is when we think about like what we do as any type of creative, whether you're you're creating with code, creating with with paint or pen and paper or creating with physical spaces. Um, mm -hmm. I've always found it so interesting that like when we really talk down, like if we break it down, we're solving the same problems. And I find that really fascinating because like all the things that you just said, so you have a client, your client's coming to you and saying, we have a product and we want someone to connect with this product. And then, Hey, thank you for the raid. I appreciate it. Um, and so the, this product that they're connecting with is something that you are, you're going to try to understand like, where are they coming from? What makes them unique? What is their story? and try to pull that together into an end result that makes people feel like they're connected to the thing that you just made, right? Like how do you get somebody from their own brain through the artifact that you created and, and somehow create a connection to that brand? And that artifact right. could be a website, it could be an app, it could be a painting, or it could be a you know three-dimensional floating shoe in the Nike flagship shore, right? <laughs> like whatever it is, like there, there's so many cool things that you could do. Um, thank you very much for the sub, Rob, I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. so like, and, and these days you're doing even even in more interesting stuff. Like I, I you sent, um, well, so you're at, uh, you're at a, a custom I mean, shop now. Yeah, I'm at Axiom Custom Products, um, 
we build out what well, we design and build out uh, spaces for, um, for, for retail, which is on pause, of course, right now. Mm-hmm. But um, we also do like hotels, um, restaurants, uh, office spaces, uh, public art too, just things that are floating out there in space that are meant to be uh, viewed from, you know, just as you, as you as a, a passerby. Yeah. Um, and so the, the, the range of projects is pretty wide and uh, really exciting for, for someone like, like me who doesn't necessarily want to specialize in just one thing. Um, mm-hmm. and that's why I love like what we're doing now is, you know, there are designers and there's nothing wrong with that, but if you want to like purely focus on like logos or web, you can do that. Um, but when you're, when you're building things for the real world that you get to like, you can, there, there are certain opportunities to explore that. Like it could be furniture, it could be architecture, it could be just interior design. Um, the gamut's pretty wide. So I'm sure just like it is for, you know, folks that are coding and, and, and like the developer world. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, yeah. And, and I also think that there's, there's room for specialists and generalists, right? Like, because specialists are the ones who are going to take something and go deep and just really make that that particular avenue incredible. But the generalists yeah. are the ones who are going to see the connections between all of those different specialties and come up with unique applications. And I, I think that like without both types of creatives, you end up with um, with like less full featured experiences, I guess. Like if mm-hmm. if I go really broad and I have a bunch of a bunch of ideas, but I don't have the expertise to go deep on any of them then I get most of the way there with a lot of things. And that, that, I, that I feel like is, is kind of my experience of the world is that I'm able to do a little bit of a lot um, and I rarely have the opportunity to really go deep and like really do something all the way to the bottom. And then I'm surrounded by these people who are just world-class experts and they know everything top to bottom about their field. Um, yep. And where I really see the magic happen is when you get to mix all of us up in a, in a pot, like, Who's going to, who's going to go around and like try to connect dots and then who's going to take each of those dots and just like drive them all the way home in a, a completely incredible way. Um, yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Like an understanding like the, the world we're in right now is especially like right now is like the, this offline to online, um, experience. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if I, if I work at, at like a, a coffee shop or a Nike or whatever, um, we certainly have our own app, but like, how does that, how does that experience like transfer over to, you know, my customer coming into the space and like, do, do those things talk to each other? Absolutely. Um, well, and that's kind of what messaging. And that's like what we're talking about today, right? Is, um, is we're going to see about like, how do we take a physical space and, and transition it to like the world we live in today, you know, for better or worse. Um, also Alex, the reason that the boops don't stay on screen is because the screen would be completely unusable. So I had to put a timeout. <laughs> so otherwise, we would be completely buried and, and you wouldn't be able to see anything, which, uh, while funny, is is probably not that uh, educational. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, yeah, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. Uh, and, and so specifically... Um, what I thought would be really interesting is, is you have a skill set that I really admire, which is the ability to look at an existing space and, um, and then hold on one second. I wait, no, I need this one back Pin that one. Yeah. That's the one I want to see. Um, so y- you have this ability to look at an existing space and do like really interesting conceptualization over the top of it. And so, um, I've watched mm-hmm. you, just kind of think through and transform something just by drawing on a picture. And I, I think that's so, uh, so cool to see, but, um, but yeah, so, so today we were going to play with something like that. Um, mm-hmm. do you want to talk a little bit about your process and, and maybe start and let me know when you want me to switch over to like a different screen here too. Yeah. Yeah. You can uh, switch over uh, okay. to that mural board if you'd like. And, uh, the link for that is public. So if people want to check it out, uh, there's, um, yeah, let me there are links that. to uh, the to the the company itself that we're going to be talking about. Um, so I'm a, a, a frequent visitor, or used to be a frequent visitor, <laughs> um, of Upper Left Roasters. Uh, they're they're in Lads Edition in um, Southeast Portland, and uh, fantastic space. Like, and they make really great coffee, of course. Um, but uh, I, I love I love everything about like the space that's there and uh, and their their brand and the whole thing. And so what you'll see on this board is uh, 
kind of this is almost a representation of what I do at the studio with our design team is we'll take uh, we'll print out or or even do a collaborative board like this uh, where we're grabbing things that are representative of of the brands of the space of maybe some of their competitors or things that they want to do just to create like a visual of like a map of like what they're what they're about yeah so this first one this first tile number one is uh, some shots from their own instagram their own website there's a link to to that uh, in the in the corner if you want to see that later um you know be my guest but you'll see like they have this really beautiful um mark that's like the upper left and uh, arrow the uh second board is just a, a collection of some of the things that their uh, I, their brand design that one down on the left yeah down on the left yeah down here um their brand designer put together uh adam garcia who's now i think a, an art director at apple um super talented guy uh, but he put together this this collection of graphics to for them to play with which you'll see applied to um you know ui for online and t-shirts and the whole thing right mm -hmm. as you should with the brands so we'll collect things like that and then uh number three is like the larger tile which is showing some of the um some content from fieldwork design which is the architecture firm that actually worked on the, the space that exists today oh cool uh you'll see that they they were inspired by um you know, the triangle that that lot formed uh, in so Lot's edition. I, I feel like we should take a quick tangent. So this is yeah. a map of, of Southeast Portland, right? And you can see like mm -hmm. here are normal streets, normal streets, everything looks great. And then you get into Lad's edition. Look at this nightmare of a, of, <laughs> like it's, I mean, it's beautiful. Like it's absolutely beautiful. You get these, these gorgeous roundabouts and um, you know, it's, a, it's a great place to walk or if you can, if you can afford to live there, it's, you know, it's absolutely lovely. But it is also the Bermuda Triangle if you accidentally start driving through it because you cannot find your way out. Like you get in here and then you lose your sense of direction and you just drive in circles until you run out of gas and call the cops. Like, you're <laughs> like somebody please come and rescue me. They got to like medevac you out. Um, yeah. <laughs> so sorry, I totally derailed you. They uh, so no, they they use this. Right, so this red a, adult supervision here. This is a uh, <laughs> yes. yeah. So the, that little. That little red triangle um, is a, like almost like becomes a graphic device for it's representative of the lot that the the shop is on. But oh, it's also, and, um, and they call themselves. It, is it upper left because they're in the upper left side of lads? Yeah, that, and I think because of the uh, upper left of like the country um, of you know, nice. being the Pacific Northwest. So you'll see like the um, I've got a, a plan view of the of the shop there below the map. Um, so you can kind of see more detail about how, how it's laid out. This is all from field work, by the way. Like I didn't design any of this just to, <laughs> just to be super clear about it. Um, just kind of collecting data, right? The, uh, the top right image on this board uh, shows like the palette and how, um, you know, they've got like some, some little indicators that show like there's like terracotta, there's, um, I think this is like white oak um, oh, sourced from cool. Oregon some elevations and then the, the photos below show just like, you know, kind of a recap of like all those things in action. So you can kind of see even like that little graphic device, that little, little triangle is being used as an inset piece uh, on some of their, um, on the, the coffee counter, the barista counter itself, as well as like some of the furniture throughout the space. Yeah. What a beautiful space. I feel, I don't think I've ever been to this coffee shop. I'm, I'm feeling like I missed out. Oh yeah. Definitely check it out. Um, the, the board on the right is just showing, uh, if you get, scroll a little bit further over, uh, you'll see some photos by uh, Marshall Steves. So if you just want to see more more examples of like what it looks like with people in it, which oh, uh, yeah. I enjoy um, because, you know, you're designing spaces for people. It's not for, you know, architecture. And, you, you know, I, I actually <laughs> feel like a lot of times that's one of the things that's the hardest. Like I, I remember when I was... Uh, I was shopping for houses or like when I used to look at, at photos of apartments when I was looking to move somewhere, the hardest thing is that all the rooms are uh, shot empty. And mm -hmm. so I didn't have a sense of like how I would fit in that space. And a lot of times I would get there and I would, I would look at a photo and that photo felt big and open and spacious and I, and then I'd be in it and it felt really like close and cramped. And you know, you find out that, Oh, they shot this with a super wide angle lens and like, 
you know, so the, the ceilings are actually only seven feet, but they looked like 12 feet because of the photography. So when you see people in the space, you get a real sense of scale that, yeah. uh, that I've, I always really like, and I, I wish that was more common. Yeah. Yeah. It's super important. And, um, it's something that I have to run myself as well as the, our design team, um, often is to like include people in your, in your, your reference imagery in your, um, even in your visuals too. Like let's people like include silhouettes or, you know, funny little stick figures of, yeah. of people doing things to show that this is a space that's designed to be used. Um, and that we're considerate of that, of those individuals. Um, also grab like some screenshots from Google maps, um, and a link to, I think there's, those are probably like Multnomah County, um, reopening guidelines for COVID, mm -hmm. uh, COVID-19, which we're not going to go too far into right now. I don't, I'm not going to give you like a tutorial on that. Um, but I did, I, what I do like about Google street view, by the way, is like, you get to see like befores and afters. If you're, if you click on the right things at the right time. So like, you can kind of see an example of the building on the right. That's what it used to look like. And that's oh, wow. data that's still, that's still on Google maps. So if you just like kind of click around. So it used to be some kind of like service, uh, shop for, I think either auto mechanics or whatnot, but, um, oh, that's... And then, like maybe, maybe a bar at some point. Um, yeah, coffee shop. that's really fun. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. but yeah, I, I, the, this is cool. And you know what I think is really cool here is, and, and maybe the chat will agree with me is when we first started talking about this, you said, we're going to look at upper left roasters. And in my head, I said, ah, hipster coffee shop in Portland. And then as we started talking and we looked at the way that the, the like location and the lot influence the, the design and the, the brand identity and even the naming of the company. Now I already feel like I like this company more than I did when you just told me the name. And, and I think that's such an interesting thing, like the stories that you can tell and, and just how susceptible we are. Like I had straight up was like, I was like, ah, whatever. And now you've told me this story and I'm like, well, I'm definitely going to go there as soon as I have an opportunity. Like it's the, the power of stories is undeniable. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, uh, so Please. quick shout out. I just realized I forgot to mention, um, we need to do a quick shout out to, uh, to white coat captioning, who is making live captioning possible. Um, you can follow along with the show in text-based format. If I can get this to load, there it is. Um, down here we have, uh, Amanda today is doing live captioning for us. Thank you so much. And that is made possible by Netlify, Fauna, Sanity, and Auth0, uh, for very generous sponsors who have uh, kicked in to help make the, this show more accessible to the whole community. So thank you very much. Um, okay. So we've got a story, we've got, we've got a board and, and this is what you would do for like every project, right? You start with this, this kind of story. Right. Right. And then typically, I mean, the, the, the client would give you a brief too. So like, that's the, that's the main part that's missing right now is like this, this person or these people that, that are part of the company would ask us to do something. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in your, in your case, for example, we had like, we did your outdoor patio situation and you had specific, um, bullets you wanted to hit regarding mm -hmm. like how to use a space. So we would, we would try to mine similar information from this client. Uh, they would probably come to us, which is all fictional, but we can just say that, Hey, they want to reopen this summer. Um, they have this, this grand idea to possibly take over the, the street in front of the, lo the location and mm -hmm. build out a patio and create a more like really open communal space that, um, that is, that is safe in that regard, but also, um, could work a little bit harder. Like maybe we integrate a changeable, um, or let's just say like a flexible food cart spot mm -hmm. that kind of butts up to that, to that property, but also doesn't, the whole thing doesn't obstruct like the existing bike thoroughfares that are there. Okay. So, um, they might want to pitch like that idea to the city or to whomever to, to move forward with that project and start building something. Yeah. Um, so I was figuring that we could kind of go down that route and explore what that might look like um identify some of those those things uh like outdoor seating um preserving a bike path and uh building out um yeah just building out zones and kind of like i'm um, just intimate space so ready for this so i i think yeah. what i what what i'm going to do then is i'm going to switch over to oh wait i think i lost your ipad 
Oh, I might have slept. Yeah, let's try this again. This is going to tweak us out for a second, but that'll be okay. Good. Okay, there, there you go. are. All right, so now we're looking at the the iPad screen. Um, mm -hmm. And so this, this to me, I've seen you do this a couple times, and it feels like absolute magic. Um, it's it's such a cool <laughs> process to watch. Um, oh, by the way, thank you for the sub, Ryan. I appreciate that. Six months, dang. It's, uh, that, it feels like it doesn't feel like I've even been streaming that long. Um, but yeah, so uh, so what's what's like step one here? Like, what's the first thing that you would do? Step one. So if we if we know some of the basic information that um, our client or our friend or whomever is asking for, um, typically I would go to okay, what what visuals do you need to help sell this idea? To either sell yourself, like convince yourself that this is the right choice, mm -hmm. or just you know to per, to persuade others to um, to take that next step with you. So uh, for this one, you know, sometimes I'll start just doing a bunch of little doodles um, from like plan views to actual like interior views. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start with a quick plan view just to kind of block things out and talk about like the overall space use. And then if we have time, we'll jump into an actual like exterior shot and like draw some things in perspective. Absolutely. Um, someone did ask here, how much do I end up using my career skills for my own personal space? Does that make home feel too much like work? Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, in, yeah. So we, we communicate primarily through sketching. Um, me, me being like, uh, a, like a spatial designer, I guess you could say, uh, I use sketch up quite often. I've surveyed my entire house. I've dement, like taken dimensions for everything. I've modeled the house. Um, I have like four different options for how I want the kitchen to look and three different options for how a new bathroom would relate to its position next to a kitchen that doesn't exist yet. So yeah, I, I've spiraled for sure, well, much it, like you might do on your own website. <laughs> and, and it's also so funny because uh, like, because Matt is good at this, every time that I go over to, it, like whenever I come to your house, it's like a, a you're like unrolling a blueprint to show me a thing that you're going to work on. Like, uh, you, like you just did your landscaping. Right. And like mm -hmm. when I, when Marissa and I talk about our landscaping, we're like, yeah, we're going to like put a tree over there and you're like, okay, well here's the schematic of our, of our house. Right. And then here is where we could add that. And you've got like architectural drawings and 3d renderings. And I'm like, how do I get you to do that from my house? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, all it takes is a, a good meal and some drinks and, um, you know, ideas and conversation flow. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so this, this is, I'm very excited about this. Uh, so also thank you, uh, Nate, Natsenberg for the sub. I appreciate it. Um, and yes, I do use the sure SM seven B. I just posted a link to my users page, which has all of those details. Um, all right, so we're looking at. Yeah, so what I've done is I grabbed a few of the screenshots that we just looked at. So like okay. a plan of the space and then also um, the street because that, that visual didn't exist yet. So we're just gonna like, like rough some ideas out really quick um, on you know, what this could be. Uh, so our client, let's just say is, again, a, remind, like a reminder that they've asked us to design a new like like patio situation by possibly taking over the street. So their existing um, space is this guy here. We know that they don't want to have anybody come into the location. So that's, well, we know that now. Uh, it's fairly, it's fairly large in here. Like they could, if they wanted to create an entry, like a vestibule that perhaps like comes up to a table, just kind of like rough this out. Say they still want to invite people in to come in and get coffee or, or something, right? Right. Uh, but they don't want everyone to go in all the way. So maybe we'll use like this natural little corridor in the center as like an in and out uh, where they can get their stuff. So they can come in. Maybe they order, they order here at a, a, a new 
a new bar set up. We, we, we build there just to protect everything else, like protect the food mm-hmm. and drinks and all those other consumables that might be going on. And then we could have them pick up maybe over here on this side and then exit. Nice. Um, you know what I'm saying? And, and so this is a, a question in the chat. This is procreate, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So the, this is the, the procreate app on iPad. Um, and you are using, uh, like the Apple pencil, right? Yep. Yep. This is an iPad, Apple pencil procreate, which is my new favorite. It's like a Photoshop killer. It's so good. Um, I love it. Yeah, it has the same layering as Photoshop. Uh, you can do multiply or you know different layer effects like multiply, linear burn, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, you can export it as a PSD to Photoshop on your desktop if you'd like. The only thing it doesn't do yet, I think, is like vector graphics. But um, I'm sure that's, in, that's something they're working on. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So, th- so like. Um, there's a question about the the vestibule. Like the the idea is, uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, this basically because of the pandemic, the interior of most restaurant spaces has been rendered more or less useless. Like we can't go, we can't be inside spaces. So right. the idea with this vestibule is that we would theoretically be able to um, allow people to come in just enough to order and pick up their stuff but without creating a space for people to like hang out or get be too close to each other or anything like that. We want, we want any, any, anyone who comes should be outside and, and properly socially existent. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's a great context. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah. And there's, there's several different ways. Like if we, if we are just protecting the interior um, and not letting people hang out, you know, this is a, just a different view of that same space. So you can kind of see, we actually have like these bar tops on either side, mm-hmm. like here and here. We could use those for interaction um, if we want. Like, so we could do like someone taking your order here and we throw up like plexiglass mm-hmm. um, to protect them. And similarly on this side, you could do like a pickup over here. Cause really what you're trying to do is prevent like people from doing like a lot of back and forth. Oh yeah. You, and, want, you and- want them to do something cyclical. And, and you could even, um, you could put like a, a vertical divider there, like a plexiglass vertical mm-hmm. divider to, so that somebody could be ordering and somebody could be picking up. And despite mm-hmm. that being somewhat of a narrow space, it would still, it, they'd be protected. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. So there's a, a various, like various ways we can go about it. It really just depends. Actually, a lot of this comes down to like their build budget, to be honest, like if, mm-hmm. if they didn't have any money you know, what I would probably do is, is utilize what the existing architecture, just like we're seeing here. Mm-hmm. I'd probably throw in some sort of like temporary barrier, like, you know, refrigerated curtains almost. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. People know that they can't go through that. Um, but it still allows, um, an emergency exit for staff, you know, like egress. Um, so if there were a fire, they can still escape. Um, but yeah, you could basically restrict like the use the existing architecture to your advantage. You don't need to like build something that you're eventually going to throw away. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. This all lets up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm just going to turn this off for a second. So back out to here, if we just kind of pretend like, okay, we, this is the, the experience that we want to have in, in the space. It's like either going to be a, oops, let's go back to this. We're either going to have an order counter that's, or some sort of um, counter that's further up in the space, closer to the front door, or we're going to utilize the existing architecture on either side. Mm -hmm. Done. So we just want people to get in and out. Yeah. They do have a a little patio situation here, which is quite nice for outdoor seating. But the big idea that they're trying to sell is um, taking over, let's just say, like this entire area here like they want to shut down clay oh, i love that so how do they how, how do they do that without like obstructing things well luckily uh this is already starting to happen like streets are getting shut down we're getting mm-hmm. converted to you know european principles in no time uh when it comes to urban space use mm-hmm. um but uh you know we still need to have bikes go through so let's just pretend like the the cars are no longer an issue uh, but we still need to have uh, bike paths. So maybe they only get like half of this. Um, so let's draw again. We're just kind of roughing out some ideas, right? 
there's going to be a crosswalk here and say they want to take over half the street. There is a gas station over here. Cool. Um, but maybe we can like make that a more beautiful experience for folks that are enjoying the coffee shop by um, installing some like long planters, like built in kind of core 10 steel planters that might have some, some plant material in them. Mm -hmm. Cause right now, like you're, you, if you were to hang out out here, you're just looking at the side of a shell gas station, but maybe we can get like somebody to do that. Yeah. You know, so if you are hanging out in front of the, the cafe, you're not seeing the side of a, a white building. So back to the cafe side, um, you know, we're probably going to build, I imagine, oops, I keep doing that. You select a hidden layer that kind of freaks out. Yeah. Um, they might, you, you might want to build the plat a platform to match the street level. So if we have mm. like the curb, if the curb is doing this right now, um, the cars are gone. We're eventually going to come in with, let's just say like a wood material that um, is going to match the curb height. I get you. Yeah. So we're going to fill this whole thing in with a new, it's a, basically a deck. Mm -hmm. So now we've got a party space. And then my, my next kind of my next thing I usually like to do is after we kind of figure out our, our working area again, this is all like, this is for bikes. I'm not drawing, I'm not drawing the, the sharrows in the right way. They're on the wrong side of the street, but it's a, let's just it's, pretend like this yeah, is the it's very British. Yeah, it's the wrong <laughs> side, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so let's just say, like, we don't want to mess with the existing patio here, um, but we do want to build out more seating onto this deck or like create little communal zones um, out here. So um, let's just pretend like that that food cart idea we had applies. So yeah. maybe there's like we drop a van in here go get your tacos or whatever you got to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to throw in some, some luxuriously spaced uh, picnic tables in here. Maybe just a couple. And for a sense of scale, like the, the distance between these would be what, like eight feet or so, so that you'd have plenty of room for, social distancing oh totally yeah it'd be like probably eight to ten because you still need to like even if you're standing in this area like getting service or just you mm -hmm. know just a human walking by you're probably still going to want six feet from the table to the next person's bubble right you know so you might want to do like like that um could be a six foot diameter circle gotcha okay you know, so you probably wouldn't want to have an overlap like that. Like that doesn't really make sense. You'd, you'd actually want it to, you want more space between them. Mm -hmm. But so yeah, you'd set up, you set them apart like that. Um, we could also create other like fun communal spaces, like people outside in the summertime, especially are, are they're all about fire pits, right? Like, so we could drop in like, you know, do we do some kind of a, a giant U shaped, fire pit situation in here and we maintain the curb or the sidewalk like this is still let's just draw like this real quick the sidewalk can still be um used for people like moving back and forth mm -hmm. so we don't need to really worry about people moving too much on our deck but um you know if we wanted to drop in like that fire pit and do whatever we want on here we can you know maybe we build another planter behind it to match the one across the street yeah and create like you create some privacy that way yeah and Again, i this I, is all like super rough well and i think that what's interesting about this type of approach too is so like you know what what we're what we're proposing here is not like massive re you're not saying like let's level this building and turn it into a a new building that's like ready for the the post covid 19 era you're just mm -hmm. taking space that already exists and doing so. And like, this is something that, that has been discussed in Portland for a long time is um, 
how do we make the city more like bike and pedestrian friendly? And there's a, a project that um, that Marissa is volunteering for right now, actually called the the Portland Promenade, where they mm -hmm. are actively working to do things like close down streets to make them pedestrian and bikes only. Um, yeah. And so this would be a, a fantastic candidate for that. And the other thing that I really like about this is that you're you're reintroducing greenery in a way that is like. I feel like one of the things that gets really sad about being in cities and, and Portland is very good at this. Like there's so much greenery in Portland, but one of the things that gets really sad about being in cities is when you're, you're out and you're like standing next to a concrete building on a concrete sidewalk and then three or four lanes of asphalt and then another concrete sidewalk and then another concrete building. And like, there was a good suggestion in the, in the chat to like do a mural on the back of that gas station. I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But like, yeah, totally. The just a little bit like a low, a low like hand railing height uh, planter with some kind of greenery in it that gives you a little bit of separation, but no visual block. Just I, I've been noticing more and more how much that adds to a space. Um, you know, you take a, an empty apartment and you add in a couple planters and it instantly looks like a minimalist space versus an empty space. And it, it, there's just this little touch that something alive brings that is uh it's it's it really is kind of sticking out to me more and more as i've been paying attention to space design um as being such a like a major major part of it yeah yeah and, and there's the the funny part about this too is like once you start i mean we've only gotten like so many minutes into this conversation but we're already seeing like other opportunities that the client might not have seen like the mural for example or like Hey, you know, the, the owners actually have like a really strong connect connection to a, a local music community. So mm. like they might figure out like, oh, maybe there's an opportunity to have like a little stage set up that's flexible where we can do outdoor concerts and like turn this into kind of a hub of some sort. Well, yeah. And like small, small scale, of course. To but, the side of the fire pit there where you've got what I assume those are like cafe tables. Mm -hmm. If those are portable, then you could you could like have a portable stage and like move the cafe tables off, put the little, you know, like a six foot stage up so that you could put, uh, not a, not a full band, but like a small band and have a, and like have a convertible area that you could make into, you know, it wouldn't yeah. be a, yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't be able to be a packed house, but you'd be able to get a few people out and like listen to music, which would be really nice. These are my really crappy music notes. <laughs> I yeah, like them. Like maybe there's a, there's like a zone, <laughs> there's like a zone for music just blasting this way um yeah so like this is kind of like where my, my brain typically goes it's like it's 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 focused around the people that would be enjoying this space and mm -hmm. typically if you want folks to hang out for a certain number of time like hours you would want a variety of, of things to do so like the fire pit the food the coffee or you know the snacks that they serve there as well they have really good sandwiches there by the way um you know bike parking uh it being a bike thoroughfare uh, we could go a step further of saying like, Hey, you know, this is a great summer solve, but like, you know, what falls like coming just around the corner. Let's put a roof on this thing. You or could do sections. Yeah. Or, or you could even think of it as, um, so like what I've seen a lot of places do is they have trellises and then the trellises have, um, like not plexiglass, but something, some kind of clear material so that the, the light still gets through, but it, it, channels the moisture off to the side um, mm -hmm. so that you can kind of sit under an open space, but you, you have protection from, uh, from rain. Um, right, right. Wouldn't, that wouldn't help with, uh, with cold, but like if you have an overhead like that, then what a lot of the food carts have done that I've always thought is kind of nice is they, they put up these kind of heavy tent flaps that uh, mm -hmm. when you put a, a space heater in there, it, it works well enough that you're not like freezing to death when you, when you go to a food truck. I don't know how that works in a, in like a post pandemic space. Cause that, that now you're outside again, which probably doesn't work, but or now you're yeah, inside again, I should say. Yeah. And you know, someone just, I think brought up like plexiglass or more glass. Um, glass is tough and plexiglass is tough just cause it, it feels so cold and sterile. Hmm. It's hard to create a space that feels um, like welcoming when you're just, when you're literally feeling like you're in a box and so um what i tend to lean towards is like more of a mix of materials like yeah you, you're probably gonna need plexi somewhere um but you know might, might as well do also like 
uh, something to contrast that and to warm it up. So mm-hmm. like do a full, a full wood wall or like a cork wall or something that's, um, you know, living like a plant wall. Oh, um, those are so cool. So you can use, you can use other materials, uh, that also kind of provide privacy, you know, acoustic, um, dampening and a little bit of COVID protection as well. Uh, you know, but we're, we're not creating clear boxes here. Like that's, that's not, that's not what I want to design. Yeah. Um, and, and when I think that that person. also like <laughs> those to, to echo a couple of things you just said, like things that I've always been troubled by with a lot of modern design is that it, it feels like, a cold empty box and one of the side effects of that is that everything is so loud like when you go to sit down in a modern bar every single conversation bounces off of every surface and it just feels like overwhelming and one of the things that i love most about a, a good design is like i don't i don't know if you've noticed this or actually i know you've noticed this because you and i have talked about it but chat when you walk into a space And that space makes you feel like you want to speak in hushed tones. And when you go there, it doesn't matter how many people are in there, how busy the restaurant is, how busy the bar is, you end up being able to have a conversation in a normal voice. Nobody's yelling. Nobody's, you know, nobody's shouting. Um, You can hear the conversation. You know, you, you can hear some background music. I don't think that that is a result of the, like the restaurant imposing rules. I think that's a result of the, the, the space being designed in a way that makes you feel like you don't need to yell. And I think a lot of that comes down to the materials, the spacing, like where the, the, like what you can see, like, am I looking across a sea of heads and I feel like I need to yell? Am I, do I feel like I'm in my private space? Then I can talk at a normal volume. Um, I've always found that just so absolutely fascinating. Yeah. There's, there's so much to, uh, yeah, I'm sure this annoys my, um, my wife but uh when we go to a new space i spend like the first five to ten minutes like looking around especially looking up to see like how did they engineer the hvac like it's not really a safety issue it's more like i'm curious about like did someone actually design this um yeah because i i care about those those details and like it's just it's easy to like to take things out of a box and just like plug them in but if you know that uh if you, I don't know, if you have an eye and like you, you know how uh, like the simple move of one like big vent or big conduit in a space like makes it makes it look bigger. Like might as well ex- like exercise that and mm. you know go for it. Um, so I'm very much like I, I, I process an entire space when I walk into it. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I'm, so now like now that we have the. Uh, the plan sort of sort of roughed out you know this is very rough of course like we're not ready to show this to anyone yet but like we we could go to like an actual perspective to see what it could look like Mm -hmm. um especially in relationship to other vertical things like things in the vertical space so like for example there's trees there oh cool you know i didn't really consider that the plan because it wasn't really showing up but that's something to keep in mind now so we probably can't have like a fire pit close to that Mm. um but maybe it's more like on the corner here. So if we were to draw out, like, let's just pretend we're going to add, um, I drew our deck, of course, this is our planter. Okay. Or a plant, a, a planter, but also a bench. So like we can just imagine. There's a pretty tall planter and on the inside of that would be a bench for people to hang out on. I got you. So you can imagine like yourself sitting here. Talking about life with your friends (laughs) and there's a fire pit that you can't see because the planter's covering it. We're about to paint over it, but maybe it's like in this corner instead. Yeah. Okay. And then we like, this would have plant material in it, like this L shape. So just for those trying to follow along, I'm drawing an L like this, and then a bench like that in plan view, and then our fire pits here. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're that's what we're seeing on the screen right now. And you could get this to be bigger, like obviously, like with with the type of plant material you you pick out. Um, 
there are certain places in town like Ron Tom's and, uh, you know, even the Doug fur has some really killer outdoor spaces that yeah. have been around for years. So you can kind of see how those spaces have grown, uh, with the plants and all that. And there's, they're super fun to hang out in. Yeah, for so sure. I kind of like that idea, like of this being out here and being private, you know, we would have our food truck in the back out here serving up tacos or whatever we want to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, the next step up would be like, okay, well, I really love that idea of covering it or the owner of the company or whomever is going to be paying for this really loves that idea. So, um, I'm going to like kind of rough in a ceiling and some framing for that. I'm not going to put a ceiling over the fire, of course, but you know, maybe it just stops short. Mm-hmm. So these are posts, these are posts that would hold it up. So maybe like halfway through, I'm just going to use black for now. Like this whole area back there could be covered. Oh yeah. And then like the front half could be a, a trellis or nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The front half can be open. Oh, and so, then you like, you know, those like globe lights, you know, and you could like mm-hmm. string those up and, and create a whole bunch of cool space. And those are weatherproof. Like oh, there's exactly. so much cool stuff you could do here. Yep, exactly. So like I've just turned our map the other way to match our previous plan view. So what we're doing now is like food truck back there. This is going to be an open roof situation. And maybe we do like a corrugate roof over this side. Mm -hmm. So you could have like covered, covered eating. So we could do like, let's just say there's freestanding chairs or tables out here just chilling. And then your picnic benches, maybe one or two are, are hanging out under the, that covered area. Again, this isn't like a scale, but we're, we're trying to, we're, as we're like working through the space, right. We're having to change the design because we're realizing certain things are affecting it. Um, so that happens all the time, but I kind of like where this is heading. I think this is cool. And you could still do, um, you could still do like a outdoor concert situation too, like that, that truck, for example, the, the van could end up being like over here and like the, the stage is actually over here instead. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, or you can even like get two trucks over there, right? Like have, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, have two, two food trucks or like the food trucks could roll out on days that you're going to have a show. Totally. And so like you could come in and just like start coloring at that point, like kind of massing things out and help people understand like the, sh- the shapes and their relationship to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually, it's usually a lot prettier than this. I'm just, we're working kind of fast right now. This is usually a process that takes several hours. <laughs> I, I mean, like, I, I love that you're apologizing for this. I don't know if you've ever seen me try to draw fast, but it, it would be straight stick figures. So you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, we can even like we can even go like the, the next, you know, does this does this thing actually reach across and like, or like what if it went up at a a slight angle, out. like almost like a vault, like that? Yeah, because then it would then it would almost uh, it creates like even more of a like space, mm-hmm. like a sense of space. Yeah, yeah, and some people, I mean, if it's if it's super permanent, you know, you're starting to see more more groups do like green roofs. Oh my god, I love green roofs. Like you could you could go crazy with that. Um, it would feel pretty dark, like in the winter time, you know how Portland gets. There's a spot um, near, uh, there's a spot near me that has a deck out back where they have a grapevine that has grown across their entire back. I think it was a trellis that they just grew a grapevine Mm -hmm. all the way across. And, um, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous because like when you go and sit out there, there are just they're literally grapes hanging down by your table. Um, but then it, because it's not evergreen, you also get, they, they open up again in the wintertime. So you get more light through the vines, um, oh, nice. which is, it, it's, it's just amazing what you can do if you're like really intentional about this stuff. And, and, you know, just even like the, what the 25 minutes that we've spent messing around with this, I can already see, you know, if this is the, if this is the 5% effort, you can really tell like how much work and how much thought is going to go into a project like this to really, uh, to make sure that it like hits all the marks that you want to hit. Yeah, totally. 
totally. And there's, yeah, there's so many different ways it can go. The easiest, the easiest way to help, help yourself make decisions too is um, because this is kind of endless is mm -hmm. having a, having a budget, a yeah. timeline, you know, a typical scope. Um, but also like if you find yourself um, struggling to on, on, on specific things, like uh, I tend to go back to values so like, what do I value as a human? Like I value being outside with my friends. And so my brain immediately goes to like outdoor spaces like this, mm -hmm. or I really value food or I really value, um, you know, uh, local businesses or whatever, whatever that thing is. So those, whatever those values are, if there's, if there's no more than five, you can kind of integrate that into your decision-making. Like, is this going to benefit a, sp a certain community that's yeah. not, that's not, um, you haven't considered before or, um, you know whatnot so that there's a there's a whole there are a whole series of like things that you can do to help help this go quicker yeah um, or help you make the right decision i should say it's not necessarily not necessarily about the speed but mm -hmm. yeah well, and there's a question in the chat about um like it, is this the same process that you use uh for your home internal design i think you've already talked about that a little bit but like do you do the same thing do you just take a picture of your living room and start coloring on it yeah, you know, I can show you that real quick. Can oh my God, it? yes, yes, let's do that. Um, let me see if I got a good example. Oh, so some of these might be online too. So like I have a, I'm sorry if you have, uh, if, well, if you if you want to follow me online, you can find me on Instagram. It's just Matthew Howard with two Ts. And, uh, but I've posted several videos like this. Yeah, Instagram.com slash Matthew Howard. I think you can see them in my highlights, but like home design, for example. Oh, I'm not logged in, so I can't do that. Okay. But well, I can share my screen if you like. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Well, I, I posted a link in the, in the chat, so the chat will be able to go. I'll include this in the show notes as well so that people can go in there. Um, but yeah, I like, I love, oh, is this your, your down, um, like your, your lower Area? Yeah, yeah. So this is just an example of, of that in action. So like I have this really, we had this really awkward space downstairs that I hate. It, and you can so, see that's like a, that's like a weird window into the kitchen. So you can see like yeah. the, that's the microwave through that, that top space. Yeah. There's like a, a couple steps down. It's a cute little, like, you know, split level house, but um, there's this space here, which we're never going to use as desks or whatever it's, trying to do right now. So I want to rip it out. And um, so again, like what we just did with all these other examples is like take a photo and then, you know, what's, what's cool. Well, I, you know, my, my wife and I like to make uh, drinks and have folks, folks over. So I drew like a wet bar on top of it. Like what, <laughs> what could that look like? Um, and again, these are all layers. So you can like, you can come in here and like, you know, I don't like the sink where that's at. So we can like move it over here instead. Um, it's pretty easy to like turn these things off and on just like you would in Photoshop, mm -hmm. but other variations include like, Oh, what if it's just like storage and you just make it a better version of storage or, mm -hmm. um, you know, what if we went to town and created like a zoo, of, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have a, we have a bird named Penny. She's a little cockatiel. Um, she thinks I'm her mate. And, uh, there's more to that story, but you know, she could have the top, the top spot and like maybe there's hamsters in the middle and then like a fish tank below. But <laughs> yeah, it's just fun just using this tool, especially, and again, like tracing, basically tracing on top of the, um, the photos that you already have to, to kind of visualize something. Um, and it doesn't need to be like this detailed, right? You can, you could rough it out pretty quickly on your own. Um, using a variety of like just really simple paint painting tools. So yeah, I definitely do this to my own house um, for sure. And this people that so don't cool. ask for it. Like I'll go, I'll go to friends' houses and be like, Hey, you know, you got that backyard, right? Let's fix that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and like we, we specifically did ask it. Um, so like we, we just did a, a renovation in the backyard where we added like um, a patio and a trellis and we like took some of the driveway off to make extra space and, and that all came from, we were like, Matt, what should we do back here? And he, he literally just like pulled out his iPad and like, like took a picture of our backyard and then drew on top of it. And the, all the light bulbs for us went off. And so I think the, the power of this is, um, that you get to take, 
the abstract idea. And mm -hmm. even with stick figures, you can say, well, it could look like this and that, yeah. um, you know, it, and then, then you can kind of visualize, you can imagine more concretely as opposed to just trying to like visualize it in your head. Um, it makes such a big difference, I think. So yeah. what are we looking at here? Yeah. This is one of my, one of my like favorites one we just whipped up. Um, this is just like a, a pie in the sky idea for like, you know, if Starbucks was to open, uh, but needed like a vestibule to uh, contain people. So very mm. similar to what we just did with uh, upper left roasters. Like we could create, this is just a photo I grabbed from the interwebs uh, of a Starbucks location. And I drew like a, a space within it, like a, a space that you'd actually walk in. Mm -hmm. um, you could see product, like featured product on the left protected by plexiglass. You would have an interaction um, for pickup in the center there with possibly a digital screen. And again, like, like talking about mixing materials, you know, we don't need to do plexiglass everywhere, um, but maybe you can do like a mirror or something different, like on the far, far right side. So like a, like a Starbucks lo logo or something on the, in white on a mirror, just to make the space feel bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, you obviously realize you're in a box, like that's not fun. So how can you make it more fun? Um, maybe this is a fun house mirror. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll work through it. Like, like this is an exact, exact op, like example of what it could look like once it's all polished up, um, keeping it in a sketch format in Procreate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could, you could go as far as like modeling it and rendering it, you know, using a 3D tool if you want. Um, it just depends on your, your level of investment and time, right? What, and what I think is, is interesting about this, right? Is so like it, what you're doing is something um, that is, reasonably low barrier to entry you're you're taking a photo and then you're using your tablet to just draw on that that photo and like uh, uh what i've seen in the past like in the pre-tablet era is people would take um transparencies like what you like those transparent slides and they would mm -hmm. lay it over the top of a photo and then they would draw on the transparency so they could like flip it off and show you like here's the before and then they'd flip on the transparency and here's the after and you could do that in um in like layers or whatever um, and so what I, yeah. what I think is really exciting about this is it, it like, this is not specialized tooling. Like there's a ton of specialized knowledge. Like you obviously have a pretty deep expertise in this, but the, the barrier to try it is very, very low. Um, right. and so you right. can, you know, you can do like, I think even on your, your phone now, there are ways that you can draw with your finger. If you just wanted to do something really rough. Um, you could just draw with your finger on a photo of your, your house or your, your living room or something. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I, I really like that. Cause you know, I'm probably never in my life going to actually like take the time to learn how to do a 3d rendering of a house. It's just the chances of me having enough of a reason to do that are low, but yeah, the, because it's so easy for me to, to take a photo of my living room and then draw on it on my iPad. I'm much more likely to give that a shot. And like, I have done that. My, uh, my bar in the front yard, in the front room was the result of like several different drawings, um, where we got to look at it and be like, no, I hate that. <laughs> All the ones I came up with were like, no, that's what we're not going to do. But, <laughs> but it helped us when we were looking for the things we did want to do. Cause we knew all the things to immediately discount. Yeah. Yeah. And Procreate has an awesome, I think it's called Procreate pocket. It's just like a, a mobile based. Oh, cool. Um, uh, you know, app for the same, same program. It does, I think it does quite a lot of the, the things that the tablet is able to do. Um, but obviously you're using your, your big clumsy finger. Um, something I wanted to point out to you to, for folks that are jumping into this, uh, this particular program, if you're curious about it, um, to make this easier to make these, like these lines look really sharp. Um, it, if perspective is not your thing, um, you can, there is a perspective assist in here. So you can do, you could set your own, um, what you could, what you would call like, uh, like vanishing points. Wait, what? And I'm about so to learn like if things. you, if you like, for example, like I, I brought in a photo, right. Uh -huh. And I know that like, if you don't know anything about vanishing points, I definitely like recommend you look it up, but, uh, it helps you establish, uh, where lines go and like they're, like how to, I don't know how to, how to like draw things in space. I'm not sure how to best like say that, but 
basically your eye sees a couple of different um, vanishing points typically in, in a camera in a very basic setup, you'll have at least two, sometimes three. So for this one, um, you can kind of see, let me just draw, like hide some of this stuff. Or you know what, we'll just bring this up to the top and it'll be easier. I'm just gonna crank this up. So for example, let me just draw on here. I can tell, like I just grabbed this, this image from the internet, right? So there, I can see that a lot of the lines for things that are going um, back in space are going this way, like this table, for example, mm -hmm. is doing that. So it's going to a point on the horizon somewhere out here. Like if you trace these back, just like this wall is, it's going somewhere over here. And similarly, there's a there's a series of lines since this space is like you know built at 90 degrees and it's convenient. There's a, there's a dot somewhere off the page right now, but you can kind of see like there's these points that everything goes back to. Mm -hmm. And so what you could do is turn on um, a drawing guide to help you establish where those are and give yourself references back to that so that every stroke that you create aligns to that grid. You're basically creating a grid to draw. Whoa. On. And um, Photoshop has similar so, tools too. I'm sure, um, you know, Maggie Appleton, I'm sure she uses things like that too. And other she, yeah, she's got killer resources. Let me uh, pull up mm -hmm. her website real quick. She is at illustrated.dev. Oh, she's redirecting it out of, to maggieappleton.com. But um, go go look at her stuff. She has an incredible, uh, just a wealth of resources. Um, and she's just a, a very good designer in, in general. Um, okay, so how how are you actually setting these up then? So typically these don't exist. I'm just gonna delete them for a second. So now I know like I, I wanna say, I say I wanna draw a very nice box inside this space and I wanna do it quickly or I wanna draw something complicated like a bunch of lattice work. So I need, I really wanna have like those reference points. I think it's gonna be helpful. So um, I know that I wanna drop some in here. It says, you know, tap to create a vanishing point. Well, I know, so I just tap literally with my finger and I'm gonna drop it right where those green lines come together. Oh yeah, and I can I can see that it's like doing a like radial. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So I'm gonna put it there, and then the other one is on the horizon. It's slightly off the artboard, so I'm gonna move it to the left, like so. And let's just say, like sometimes there's one above and below. Like if your camera's really low to the ground. You uh -huh. might need to drop another one, um, like in the sky <laughs> and I could show you that later, Jason. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. So now, now that we have like this grid that we can play with again, I turned off all the other stuff. Well, most of the stuff that was, um, kind of in the way, but I'm going to draw another layer, but I'm going to have that layer snap to that grid that we just created that vanishing point grid. So I turn on drawing assist. It's an option for every layer. And now I can come in here and like not, I can't really mess it up. So if I draw like a, like I didn't, I'm not intentionally drawing these lines. Like I'm being really loose with it. They all happen to be snapping to Whoa. that point. And it's basically perfect. Like you can't, you can't mess it up. And then you can also go the same way towards the other vanishing point. And so, so looking at that from like how you would actually use this, right? So you set these vanishing points up. Now, when you go to draw, say that table right in the center, you're just going to trace the edges and it's just going to stick. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the up and downs. Yeah. So it's still, it still walks to left and right and up mm -hmm. and down uh, that axis. But say I want to just draw a new cube in this space. So I can literally just, I'm doing this so fast. You guys can't really see how sloppy I am right now, but it's making it look like it, it's in that space already. Right? Yeah. It's, it's like working really well. And let's just say I want to give this a green face. Wow. Yeah. That, I mean, it. So I don't work for Procreate, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's a fantastic tool. I highly uh, encourage you all to, to try it out if you if you want to get into stuff like this, or even just like to create graphics too. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then, yeah, so then if you want to, if you want to toggle, like now I'm back to like a more organic brush, you can toggle it off and on. I can turn this. So this is our original cube. I can turn the drawing assist off and now I can like go back to making a mess on top of it. Yeah. Well that, I mean, that's super handy. Cause like, that's something I've always thought about is like, I've seen people uh, do the perspective drawings and like, I know that if you draw and hold, it'll snap to a shape or a straight line or, or whatever. Oh, right. uh, but I didn't know. Yeah, like this. yeah. Right. So, and I just assumed that everybody had way better eyes than me and we're just <laughs> doing that perspective that well. Um, but yeah, this is, this is fantastic. Uh, so there's no, a good question in the cheap. chat from, uh, from Scrabble. What resources do you recommend, uh, for someone who's interested in this? Oh man, wants to build a bar in their front yard. Um, <laughs> That's not what luck. I did by the way. Um, well, to be honest, I, it, it, it might sound cheesy, but I'm, I'm on Pinterest and Instagram all day long. I'm like, I'm looking at other stuff that are like that people have already designed. So I'll follow, I'll follow certain keywords. Um, to, to find inspiration for the things I'm after or a certain aesthetic that I'm after. So if it's like, uh, much like you might buy a magazine to, uh, if you like modern homes, you're probably going to be a dwell subscriber. Or if you really love like a, a ranch style homes that are from like the 50s, 60s, 70s, you're probably going to subscribe to Atomic Ranch. So uh, when it comes to actually building things, I, I don't really have a resource for that outside of like just the internet in general. But when it comes to the design of those things, it's usually anything that's already out there that exists. It's actually fairly common because that's like where most mm. of the content's being produced. But so, I guess like um, in all, in all fairness, uh, one of the things that I have noticed about design is like very few things are net new. Like almost everything mm -hmm. is a rearrangement of existing ideas. And so, so the trick isn't to like, invent things the trick is to understand what's available and, and see ways to connect those dots in different ways right yeah yeah because oftentimes yeah you're not trying to reinvent the wheel um if anything you're trying to take an existing space or existing thing and not waste it and make it better and you're trying to improve upon it mm -hmm. so if you get a chance to like you know don't throw that 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 picnic table away or that bed frame away or don't knock out a specific wall in your house like there's a there's there might be other ways to go about fixing the problem um if you can kind of like reframe it um or go into it with a certain set of values in mind yeah yeah um, but yeah aesthetics are really easy to search for so if you know like i really like minimalism and i love plants you can literally just type plant plants and minimalism and maybe a living room into like a pinterest or into something like some kind of search uh aggregator kind of thing uh, and you'll find good stuff um, and and so if you don't know like, so for somebody like me, like I, I have never heard of Atomic Ranch, right? And if you tell me to identify a ranch style house, I would say that I have a 45% chance of picking one out of a lineup. Um, Cause I kind of know ranch style, but like, I don't know that I really know the difference between a ranch style and, and like a lot of other common houses that I would see in a neighborhood. Um, so if, mm -hmm. if I want to start building this, this board, it sounds like really the secret is starting to learn what the styles are named so that I can search for them. So if I see a house that I like, I should find out what style of house that is so I can search for more and see if it's just that house or if it's all houses like that. Totally. Totally. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not, I mean, I'm definitely not an architect. I'm more of a interior kind of like display kind of a guy, but, um, but yeah, if you, if you stumble upon something you really love, like I love that base, like you're certainly going to find, like try to find out who made it like mm -hmm. what of what era etc so it's yeah your example is, is great jason like i really love that ranch home i don't know it's called a ranch um <laughs> but you can you can look up that era right you could probably say oh that feels like it's from the 50s or um and then you'll just kind of go on a rabbit hole like all mm -hmm. of a sudden you'll be looking up uh rummers or like a, a fantastic home design um that are they're blowing up right now um as an architect Back Did in the you day, say it's rummers, really as in like yeah, R U M M E R. Yeah, like a like a nickname for rum. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then if you if you type in like house, got it. Google Rummer. also thought I was thinking about rum. You can see like these are the types of homes where they have like large large atrium spaces inside the house. Okay. Uh, well, so like you'd stumble upon that probably by by 
by finding like you know going down that ranch home path or like mid-century modern path yeah might eventually end up here yep okay well these are gorgeous um yeah and way out of my price range but uh (laughs) but you're seeing people design like what i love about these specifically it's kind of jumping back to my love for the outdoors like anyone that brings like a lot of plant material into a home or like Mm -hmm. considers lights like natural light and like your relationship with the outdoors um i'm really into that yeah 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 and i mean um and and like avh4 brings up a good point which is like if you don't know any of these terms like if 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 you're gonna look at a house and say that's a house and that's about all you know then maybe the best way to start is to just do a google search like popular house styles and get a breakdown where somebody gives you the big buckets because Mm -hmm. that that at least lets you know i I feel like a lot of times when uh, when something like an area of knowledge feels too large um I don't know, I don't know the the vernacular. I don't know like any of the categorizations. I don't even know how I would start slicing it into subcategories. Something big like that helps me cut off huge chunks of what I don't care about. If I go look up houses and I find out that the ones with like big columns out front, I'm like, okay, I don't I know I don't want that house. So what style of house is that? And I can just get it out of my search. And then I can, you know, look at these like, well, these ones kind of look the same to me, but like this one is a whatever a chalet style and this one is a is a dutch colonial right oh well the difference is this and now i know like oh, okay i'm looking for that thing and that thing um and and it just kind of helps you start to slowly narrow down without having to become an actual expert you just start to learn like oh if i search for like this suite of phrases i'm going to find things that mostly look like what i want and like if i'm more of an expert i'm going to have better search terms which is you know coincidentally i feel like the the secret to being good at anything like really ascending to expert level is being very good at googling <laughs> it's so true it's so um, true because yeah if you get an emotional connection to atriums for example you go into an institution a building and you love like giant giant atriums so if you search for atrium and house you're probably going to end up with things that look like this let's so find out like simpl- let's see if we immediately see search. Yeah, like, see, these are a little more modern. How long before we get to a rummer? I don't know, but you can do the same thing too. Here's with one. like, let's just let's just say you like um, you're trying to design like your kid's bedroom, and mm-hmm. uh, you're really into Montessori, or you want um, like some kind of modular shelving system. You don't necessarily mm-hmm. need to know the name of a style to find that information you could just kind of look for those keywords uh to find to find things to inspire you yeah yeah and candy cane at, at that point why not just hire an expert absolutely hire an expert <laughs> like that's yeah. you know that's what what matt is here to do um and i think that it's you know it what i've always found is is i when you do any project you are either going to spend time or money on it um, and probably almost always some combination, right? So you're finding a spot on the spectrum where you're saying, I will invest mostly time and, a li- and as little money as possible or the other way around, as little time as possible and I'll spend whatever I need to to get it done. And I think that like the trade-off there is just weighing your options, like how much money is available to you. If you, if you want to get a thing done and you don't have a lot of money available, do you have time? Like, could you learn the thing and do it at a lower budget? Um, or if you have money available, do you enjoy it? Like, would it be fun for you to learn that thing and develop that skill? Because then maybe it's worth spending the time if it's not fun or if it's just stressful and you're like fighting all the time because you, you and your partner don't know enough. And you're just like, you you know, like Marissa and I get into that sometimes with like, uh, like different parts of the house where we, we know enough to know what we want, but not enough to have like a constructive conversation. And that's when we decide to hire an expert because we we realize we're going to spend so much time and it's going to be so stressful that it's actually worth more to us to spend the money to save the time. Um, and so I think, you know, it's always just a spectrum. Is this fun? And is it worth it? Am I stressed out? Is this taking years off my life? Because then I should spend money. <laughs> Whereas like if I'm having a blast, like why would I pay somebody else to do something that's fun for me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you know, you know, if you have, again, like, some some values to go back on if you have um scope to go back on time money etc mm-hmm. and if you have um 
especially a list, a list of things that you love and don't mm-hmm. like, like that's, that's huge. That's, that's very valuable information to someone that's going to help you. Um, yeah. As someone kind of mentioned in here too, you know, uh, doing a little research at first will help move the project along. If you decide to engage someone, uh, that actually came from David, someone who works with me, <laughs> David Bluff. Nice. Nice. Um, well, yeah. So th- I mean, that's, this is, this is such good information and, and like the, I, I actually, do you have any of those uh you would you had shown me some some really cool photos of the the custom stuff that you're doing for interiors and i think this is just a good like talking about experts and and things that they're good at um what is is it axiom custom axiom custom.com yeah dot com yeah um because you had showed me like one of your coworkers did a like a gold-plated chicken sandwich which was one of my favorite things that i've seen in a while um Mm -hmm. And like, do you, do you have any other examples that I can point to of like some of the cool custom build outs that you've done? Yeah, there might, there might be, um, we're actually in the middle of like a, a brand, uh, refresh right now. So the site's not super updated, but, um, we have more relevant content probably on Instagram, Okay. which, uh, but if you scroll down, oh. um, we might see, look at that. There's some more case, like use case or case studies here. So like that, um, I'm trying to think yeah, like that, that, that shoe thing is pretty hilarious. So there's a mix of stuff you're seeing here. There's like very marketing specific projects that are like where we're helping Nike or Jordan uh, uh-huh. sell something very specifically um, and uh, connect to a community or build out a story. So that's what some of these examples are. And then you have like the opposite end of the spectrum, which is like furniture and possibly like architectural space. So you'll see a, a variety of stuff on here. Um, that top one in the left, the top left one with a, like a large shoe, that's like something that we designed and built in house in a couple of weeks. Like that was for a music festival that um, Tyler, the creator throws in LA every year. Nice. Um, so he was launching a, a new shoe with Converse and like they hired us to, to build a, a beacon, if you will, um, to celebrate that and to kind of give some, <laughs> a place for people to, to get Wi-Fi, to hang out, to charge their phones. So it became like a space that was, um, you know, for folks to hang out and, and chill and get recharged. Oh, uh, that is so much fun. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think, and it's just cool. Like this is a space that I don't ever go into, right? Like physical, physical space is not a thing that I really touch. Um, and so it's really, really fun to me to just see the creative things that can be done when you start looking at at what happens in physical space right like i'm always trying to play with with digital space but there's only so much you can do and so how do you take that a step further how do you move that into the real world and make it something that you can play with and i think that you know there's there's making the apps or like augmented reality and it's like oh it's still very digital and then there's like let's make a big ass shoe (laughs) <laughs> and I just think that's so much fun. And, and it's so cool to think about how much of an impact that sort of thing can have on my mood as someone attending the festival. Like, you know, it's a thing that you remember. It's a thing that you take photos with. I've never seen anybody take a photo with a website. Like you don't get a lot of like, I had the best experience with this app. Here's a selfie of me with this app. It, it's never that like, but you're always like, look at this amazing space or this super cool chair. Like those are the things that you feel like you want to like you, you, you want to take a photo with it or, or interact with it or touch it. Um, and I think that's so cool. Yeah. And there's, there's some, uh, there's, there's some sweet spot spot between, you know, our two worlds, Jason Link, if I'm hanging out over here and you're, you're hanging out in code, like there's gotta be some like really cool stuff we can make that, um, (sighs) that not just, that doesn't just like drive you to, um, you know, a purchase, but, um, or creates a shareable me- like moment, but does something else. Don't threaten um, me with a good time, Matt. And I think that's, it's, it's, a, it's what a lot of companies are exploring right now, especially since the events and uh, space industry has been hit so hard with, uh, you know, what's, what's, what's going on. Sorry, that was a poorly so, timed laugh. I, the, the chat was, was making funny statements while you were making sad statements and I laughed at the wrong thing. <laughs> um, no, I, I, but I'm with you on that because I think that there's so much potential, um, you know, and like Marissa is in the chat right now, actually talking about the idea of like placemaking. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and, and there's so much interesting potential for like, not just, so like physical space, like a statue is beautiful. You, you see it you you enjoy it uh you take a photo 
and then you kind of move on with your life. And a, a, an app or a website is informational. You learn what you need or you, you do the thing that you need to do and then you move on with your life. Um, mm -hmm. And what I think is really interesting is this idea of like, how, how do we merge them? And, and like, what's possible if we merge them? Um, like we had uh, 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 Charlie Girard was on the show a little bit ago and she was talking about like human computer interfaces in a way that I, I don't think a lot of people are playing with where she's putting on a headband that reads her thought, her brainwaves. And she's able to do things like control her computer or um, play Beat Saber or, you know, whatever. Like she can do all these really, really cool things where she interacts in real space and it makes impact in the, the digital space. Um, and you see things like uh, like interactive uh, interactive overlays. There's a, a company that I can't remember the name of, but they do a like an augmented reality projector. And it, um, it like will map the space that you're in and overlay it with with things and you can actually like interact with it. If I wave my arm, it'll affect what's being projected on the screen. And so now you can create like truly interactive physical environments, which is, uh, there's just so many cool things that I'm seeing come up. I'm really excited to see what keeps happening. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super inspiring. I think that, I mean, the, there's, there's opportunities to, to like, to break things like, mm -hmm. let's, figure out what entertainment looks like what how can the movie theater system adapt to be more immersive and like i don't mean like smell of vision but um you know how can you create uh, an experience that's more rich and has more like actual tactile touch points to it mm -hmm. um that also connects to some something else uh bigger and digital like they can scale um, i'm very very interested in exploring all that um at, like Every, every day, every day I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it's, I mean, it sounds cheesy, but you know, it's the future, but yeah, it kind of is, you know, like. Well, especially now, the, the right? Basic level, like furniture is also not going around away, you know, like people still need things, you know, to sit on to, to help them be more productive. So it's not like not all of our goals need to be so, so high and like groundbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's funny because it, it feels like, especially with, with like COVID-19 and the, the way that it's just upended all physical spaces, um, it feels like everything is different, but at the same time, like everything is still the same where, you know, we still have to go to work. We still have to find ways to interact with each other. We still have to feed ourselves and we still have to create social connection. So how are we going to do that when the rules are different, right? Because the, the needs are the same. So, um, and I, I'm I'm really interested to see what companies like yours and and what uh, what creative minds like yours are going to do with physical spaces, so that we don't lose that purely human aspect of like how do I go interact with my friends in a way that's not inherently risky. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that we can solve that. We can solve that with design. We can solve that. You know, there's a bunch of things that we can do just in general, like like you know, wearing masks and stuff, but like, how do we make it so that it doesn't become like, I have to put on a hazmat suit to see my friends. I want, I want to be able to go to a space that's designed to keep me safe. Um, instead of making myself safe to go into a space that's inherently unsafe. And I, I think right. that I'm really excited to see what that does to, to, uh, culture in general, but like specifically how, what, how does that become digital? It seems like we're at the, we're at the first the first point in human history that that I'm aware of where there's a fundamental shift in needs while also having access to the kinds of technology that we have. Yeah, it's it's incredible. And I mean, that's something that I'm, I'm my, my, my hunches lately have been like steering me towards because um, it's happening, you know, especially like the 4th of July. Most folks just like walked outside and hung out with their neighbors for the 4th of July. Like mm -hmm. that's becoming a... a a thing um, or any kind of holiday, not specific to like last weekends, but um, the idea of community building and empowering like smaller um, cells or smaller communities to, to get stuff, stuff done, be it daycare or f growing food mm -hmm. um, or just generally helping each other out. I think that's, you're going to see more of that 
um, it's going to be less of us as independent families trying to get things done because we're, it's not sustainable unless capitalism changes in some way or like the expectations of what we're doing here every day, like 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. you know, if that doesn't change, then something else needs to step up to the plate. And it might just be smaller communities that, um, that do lower their guard, that, that share like, that share space and like, you know, create, create cells, so to speak. I love it. Uh, yeah. Well, Matt, this has been so much fun. I, it, and it's such a, a welcome departure from uh, just to, into a whole new world, right? Like just different things that we don't usually think about. Um, mm -hmm. So with that, if someone wants to dive deeper or follow your work, uh, where should we send them? Let's let's send them to your Instagram for sure that I apparently yeah. closed. So let's open that again. Yeah, Instagram's great. Um, I'm on Twitter. I have a site, but it's all like life's been too busy and I've, this has been like my primary primary outlet lately. So if you want to see like funny sketches or even serious topics like BLM, et cetera, those are all like, it's all on here. Um, and uh, yeah, I am super excited. We got to do this. I, I hope we get to do it again too uh, soon. Yeah. I I'm really excited. I think like at some point in the future, when, when we can safely be in the same place, I really want to like, do a physical thing like I, I you're so good at, at creating physical spaces that i think it would be fun to actually try to do that together um yeah with that yeah. being said y'all thank you so much for hanging out today uh matt thank you for for coming and teaching us this was this was super fun um huge thank you to white co captioning for doing the the live captioning today and to our sponsors uh fauna netlify sanity and auth zero for putting in to to make this community more accessible to everybody um with that being said Thank you all so, so, so much for hanging out today. And we are going to raid. So chat, stay tuned. Thank you very much. Um, Matt, thanks for hanging out. We'll uh, see you next time. Thanks, Jason.